It was the early 90s when we located and purchased our property in Colorado. By 1997, we had completed building the house using power from the first spring-fed hydropower system. That first system ran reliably for decades and provided not only electric power, but also gravity-fed spring water and a pond where we could stock trout. The cost of all those benefits were far less than the expense of stringing in grid power and then having monthly utility bills. Between 2010 and 2013, we observed a reduction in our spring flow due both to extended drought and what we believe to be the effect of a newly constructed pond which diverted water from a natural wetland area that fed our springs underground. In the mid-90s, we had purchased additional land which contained a creek with the plan to someday access it for additional hydropower. Having secured the non-consumptive water rights years earlier, we made the decision to finally build this new system, and that is the topic of this entire video series. This one segment of the series is intended to provide an overview of the whole process which took a couple of years to complete. Viewers can watch individual segments or the whole series to study in greater detail what the journey has been. A notation in the lower corner will guide you to what other segment of the series provides greater detail. When the process began, the first thing to do was to determine how much power we could capture with our existing turbine and alternator from the creek. We had measured the seasonal flows of how much water we could expect by installing a temporary weir and recording the readings. In addition, we measured the head or fall of the water where we would capture and then return the water to the creek. These two measurements of water flow and head told us how much power we could expect to harness. There was a great deal of research, calculation, design of elements, budgeting, bidding, and financing in advance of breaking ground on this new system. We would be using the turbine and equipment from the first system and make modifications to keep the costs as efficient as possible. Spreadsheets were used to evaluate the various options on pipe size, versus their cost and how much power they could provide. The new system would break down into several basic components that would need to be installed to make the system possible. We had for years been looking at the creek near the edge of our property and the topography there. The hills were too steep on one side of the creek to make installing a pipeline on that side feasible. In addition, there was a meadow which had a smaller second source of water already flowing through it. We decided that the meadow would make an ideal place to divert water from the creek and combine it in a controlled fashion with existing water for feeding the system. This would mean that we would need to get the water back to the other side of the creek where the powerhouse would be situated. A pipe bridge would need to be constructed. Once financing was secured and a neighbor granted us permission to access the remote area where we would begin construction, we ordered and took delivery of nearly a half a mile of pipe in September of 2013. The pipeline was designed with different pressure grades that would increase as the pressure increased as it descended to the powerhouse. The first part of construction was to install a diversion pipe to the meadow. The ground was too unstable to permit burying the short pipeline, so we elected to go overground and do much of the work by hand. The next component to consider was the intake weir dam that would sit in the meadow. We needed to divert the water that was already running through the meadow 
as we worked to build the weir. It was a very muddy job and we decided to install a standpipe which would enable us to move water under the weir dam once it was in place. It was October and we were starting to get snow. So we needed to move on several fronts. A footbridge was installed over the creek and foundation piers for the bridge were poured by using the cable that would support the pipe bridge. We also obtained county permission to dig our transmission cable under the road and buried conduit for that purpose. The powerhouse was designed in great detail with a CAD program so that we were certain how it would all fit together with our existing equipment. The frame to support the turbine equipment would be embedded in the powerhouse slab. A plan was developed to be able to someday install a second jet into the turbine. We framed the forms for the concrete pour. The winter was fast approaching as we poured the slab for the powerhouse. The powerhouse slab turned out nicely due to the extensive planning we undertook. The weir dam was finally completed and the collection bucket designed from a diesel truck fuel tank was installed. Now the first part of the system was complete and could supply water to where the bridge would carry it back across the creek. Fortunately, we finished this before the major storms in the mountains forced us to cease our efforts. The winter would set in and prevent us from doing much until the following spring. The first videos of this process were posted in December of 2013, and we've been very pleased to see the viewership response. It has gone far beyond our expectations.